this is a uh, regular business meeting called to order. Uh, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance. To the United, United, States United States of America, of America. and, and to, to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, visible with liberty and, and justice for all. For all. <laughs> Roll call, Mr. Kenna. President McCarthy. Present. Dr. Carpenter. Present. Mr. Forbeck. Present. Ms. Lualbo. Present. Mr. Matlin. Present. Mr. Er, Ms. Provenza. Sorry. Present. <laughs> Mr. Suchovich. I'm here. Mayor Recupero. Present. Mr. Pitch. Present. Mr. Alexander. Here. I am also here. At this time, before um, we hear registered comments, uh, Mr. Alexander will make a statement uh, about an issue that's ongoing. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, immediately preceding this evening's meeting, well, not immediately preceding, prior to the public hearing that immediately preceded uh, this meeting, we held an executive session to talk about potential litigation, uh, and that involved uh, things up on North Street and what the consensus of uh, the borough council is, as well as my advice is that uh, I know that there may be some comment on this issue and, and rightfully so. Uh, however, because there are now an attorneys involved, the, the borough can no longer offer its comment uh, on pending or potential litigation. So we welcome any comments with regard to the subject, but the consensus is and my advice is uh, because lawyers are involved that the borough cannot have a debate, a dialogue back and forth. We will listen to any, the comments will take it under consideration, but we will not be, uh, the borough will not be participating in that discussion at this time until we get uh, a better feel on uh, what the attorneys have to say. They have reached out to us to sit down and talk, and I'm going to be reaching back out to them to accomplish that. Uh, but right now, we're going to entertain any borough comment without uh, response. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Uh, with that being said, uh, we'll hear comments from the registered comments from the public. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Mr. Kennan. Okay, the registered comments. The first comment is David Lowry of 430 Penn Street regarding the pickleball court. So... Let me put him up first. Go ahead, Mr. Lowry. Are you there, Mr. Lowry? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for your time. I, I just want to say uh, the reason why I asked to make a statement. Um, I live at 430 Penn Street. Um, my back behind my house is Arch Street. Um, the, the group that has taken over the pickleball court seems to be um, at the liberty of whatever they feel like doing. Um, they're setting times. They're setting parking now. Um, they have advertising from 10.7 Marina on the, on the courts now. Um, <clears throat> We were having a problem with the, the people who came there parking on grass, but I see they put up a sign today. Um, my biggest problem is they want to do a lot of things that it doesn't seem like Parks and Recreations or the borough is prepared to do anything about. They put up a, uh, a screen that is uh, a shade screen, which does no good because of the mountain on the other side of the river blocks that sun and they've only put up a four foot screen. Uh, it was a waste of money. I noticed that the borough of Verona has added a thousand dollars into their fund. So you guys, I'm sure want your money spent wisely. Uh, they're talking about things like uh, bleachers in the future, a pavilion, uh, the, all these things they're, they're wanting to put in, um, um, the, a backward plywood backwards is going to cause a bigger noise problem. Uh, I've just noticed 
Um, my neighbor who doesn't have the right to, but he put up no parking signs so nobody parks behind his, his property. Uh, I feel like I'm going to do the same thing soon. Um, basically, I, I just wish that the borough or Parks and Restorations would have some say in what they're doing. Uh, according to the zoning code for the Parks and Restorations, um, it says that Sundays, the park is not supposed to open till 1 p.m. And they have signs up that it's open, their court is open at nine. So who runs the court? Is it parks? Is it the borough? Or is it this gentleman, Jeffrey Peppers? Uh, I thank you for your time. Um, I'm sure I have lots to say, but that's what I wanted to get out today. Uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Lowry. Next person, Mr. Ken, anybody else? You're muted. Yeah, next is James Moorfield, but I'm looking on the list here and I don't see him. Okay, we can move on and see if he shows okay. up later. Uh, next on the list is Dan Showalter. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Wonderful. Um, Dan Showalter, 440 North Avenue. Um, a few months back, I had put in an application to be on the planning commission. Um, obviously not something I've really brought up considering 2020 has kind of kicked us all in the butt. I wasn't trying to press kind of a non-issue kind of thing. But with us heading into the holidays and everything, I would hope that my application doesn't get lost in the shuffle. So um, basically I'm just asking um, either tonight or further down the road when you guys have the time, if you could uh, please vote on uh, me possibly being on the planning commission. Thank you for your time, appreciate it. Thank you. We're Thanks, gonna Dan. address that later in the meeting, Dan. Thank you. Okay, next is Laura Jacko. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Uh, Laura Jacko, 437 North Avenue. And I think I started my meeting at probably like 701. So I think I came in midway through. It sounds like there's not going to be maybe too much comment about the thing that I was, um, that I'm probably going to be talking about. But I wanted to bring up what my experience has been. Um, <clears throat> recently, I've had a little bit of a negative experience, which is, uh, you know, unfortunate because, you know, I'm a big fan of the borough and friends with, you know, even a lot of council members. Um, but, you know, I've, I, I'm, I've been aware of some of the issues that have been going on at 440 or wait, the, the cat's house, a couple houses up from me. Um, and I, you know, I, I've brought these, some of these issues to your attention, um, you know, honestly, for a year now. And I was in a meeting with, um, you know, Mark Stanton, where, you know, my neighbor was trying to understand some of the incorrect information that was given to her and not just her but myself and borough um, council members over the course of the last at least year if not more and um, I'm honestly I'm really disappointed and upset that um, it was admitted to me by an, the employee of our borough that he didn't he didn't check the code when he was telling you know council, myself, and my neighbor, what the codes were that were in relation to her um, that, that she was asking about. I, I, he, he actually said that in front of us that, I mean, and I understand that mistakes are made, but he did also admit that he didn't even check before giving us this information. And now, as you know, it's, you know, having ramifications. I, I find this to be, um, you know, troubling, and um, I wanted to bring it to your attention because it, it made me feel upset. Um, and I, I really expect out of leadership that, you know, people at least care to, I mean, I, I understand that mistakes happen, but I expect people to at least care enough to, to check and really honestly do their best in their due diligence to give people correct information. Um, you know, especially when people are coming to the borough and try, trying to be, you know, members of our community and really honestly trying to make the community a better place. And uh, in addition to this, um, just in general with, the, with this issue of um, 
just generally developers coming in, buying up houses and breaking them apart into apartment buildings, which is what they were not originally intended for. Um, you know, I brought this to council's attention at least a year ago, because I did look up October's meeting last year. Um, I was troubled by it at the time. I'm still troubled by it. Um, you know, I understand you guys were told not to worry, and that's why no action was taken, but it turns out at this point we do need to worry that the codes we were informed about were incorrect, and that people are starting to come in here and purchase houses and break them up into apartments. Um, I know of another house I just found out about on my street alone that was purchased by the same fella, and he's intending on turning it into apartments as well. So, um, and as you know, the the parking on our street is a massive issue already. Um, this, and they're taking homes that were intended to be for people that are long-term residents of Rona, people that are gonna stay here, people that are gonna care. And now they're being managed by people who don't care, who don't live here, um, who are trouble already. Like this person that purchased this house two up from me has already you know, gotten fined because he's not playing by the rules. Like. We need code and zoning updates now. I know that we might want to, you know, it's tempting to wait for like the whole, um, you know, plan for the whole borough, comprehensive plan. I'm very pro comprehensive plan. I think it's a good idea, but this is a problem that's happening immediately. And now the zoning ordinances haven't been updated in a really long time. We need to look at this because people are coming in, they're buying our single family homes and they're breaking them up into like three apartments. This is, you know, unacceptable. It's gonna, kill my housing value, it's gonna kill your housing values. Um, we all should care and we need to take steps to, you know, look at this matter and see what we can do to protect the um, citizens of Verona, in my opinion. Obi Morford had suggested at the meeting we had with Mark Stanton that possibly one thing that could be done is that, uh, you know, a resolution could be passed that if someone is breaking up a single family home into apartments, the owner has to live there, that thereby kind of cutting out these people that are, um, you know, extracting these resources from Verona, but not living here. Um, but if we, you know, that, that's been brought up. If you guys don't think that's a good idea, I would love to hear people's ideas because the problem is at our doorstep now. I think that we should um, be, be passing more, um, like updating our zoning to protect borough residents and not absentee landlords. Um, like I said, I, I was, I brought this up a year ago and now I'm pretty upset. Uh, but I think that now it's it's a problem and it needs to be addressed. Um, and this has nothing to do with anything, but somebody put a trash can in at the bottom of our street. I think it was you guys. And I did want to say thank you for doing that because the, uh, the littering has significantly decreased at the bottom of the street. And I did want to end with a win because it's, it's always nice to acknowledge when when good things have been done. So I would like attention to this matter, prompt attention and, um, you know, and, and thank you for the, uh, thanks for the trash can. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. All right, so <clears throat> next is Jessica Verone. Go ahead, Jessica. Jessica. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Technical difficulty. Um, okay. Uh, I just want to first say thank you to Jerry for getting the agenda up on the website and the meeting minutes. That's really helpful. And I, I really appreciate that after um, um, our request for that. I think it's really helpful. Um, but I'm mostly here today to talk a little bit about the upcoming plans for the uh, Barona Sesquan Centennial. Um, 150th celebration, which is in 2021. So as many of you already know, we have a planning committee put together to help um, start <laughs> planning for that. And I did send out um, a, a sheet uh, that hopefully everybody on council got um, <coughs> from, through Marsha in advance. It just kind of summarizes some of the planned activities. The highlights um, are that we're going to have a kickoff celebration on May 8th. Um, I think that's the same time as a council meeting actually, or a, there's some other meeting that night. Um, so we can um, uh, have some cake and celebrate, you know, the official birthday, I guess May was when um, the Verona was officially incorporated. 
um, and we'll be burying a time capsule at that point in time, actually not burying in the borough building. Um, so kind of a figurative burial. Um, and also have like a group photo with some of the key players. And then um, bigger events, on July 17th, we are planning to have a parade, um, which will feature mostly local organizations. Um, we're trying to work to keep costs down and a float contest. And then we'll have on the same day, a community day at Railroad Park with a lot of activities, food, vendors, sidewalk sale, um, some performances that evening. Um, and then the following day, we'll have a community picnic. Um, there's a few different products we're working on, a commemorative video, a book that will have pictures of um, different areas of Verona in the past and present. And um, many of you already know we already are selling t-shirts and um, Christmas ornaments I think have already arrived and we'll be selling those very soon so people can get them this holiday season. Um, <clears throat> so with all the planning, of course, we've done some fundraising to cover these expenses. Um, and I've listed that on the sheet. Um, we haven't gotten the funds yet from the Eagles, but we did a bingo fundraiser in January there. And so after COVID hit, they've had some cash flow issues, but we hope to get that money very soon. Um, and we raised somewhere in the range of $2,500. I haven't gotten anything really in writing. Um, and then we we're also raising some money through the sale of those t-shirts and ornaments that I mentioned. Um, we would really, we really feel that it, you know, council, um, should be considering the cost for the uh, celebration in your upcoming budget discussions um, and the committee would like to request a donation to support these activities in the amount of three thousand uh, dollars we'd like this to specifically go towards um, the kind of headliner event uh, or entertainment event on uh, july 17th which we're hoping to get, get um, some like professional acrobatic performers and some fire dancers. We did a lot of research into what would be a good um, activity that would be entertaining and for all ages. Um, I know a lot of people wanted fireworks, but our committee determined that would be pretty significant expense, like, you know, $7,000 or and up just for a, you know, 10 minute performance. And then there's a lot of other factors to consider with that. So we decided to go with um, something that would, might be a little easier to, to coordinate, with that, but that would still be um, a really big bang uh, for the for the community. So um, that's it. And I'm happy to answer any questions here or, or later via email if you have them regarding this request or our um, planned activities for the 150th. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. Okay, we have one more thing. Um, this uh, resident was not able to come to the meeting, but she had uh, sent me an email to to uh, to read. So this is from Lisa Nzinga at 520 Ridge Avenue. Uh, it says, below are some issues I would like to be addressed at the council meeting. I will not be in attendance. We talked on the phone a while ago about Act 77 being implemented for Verona senior citizens. Act 77 allows senior citizens to have a 30% deduction in local real estate taxes. You, uh, you told me to send an email so the topic can be addressed at a council meeting. I would like to be, this to be brought up at the next council meeting for consideration and what can be done to make this tax reduction happen. I am also asking about the senior citizen discount for garbage slash trash pickup. County Hauling told me they offer that discount, but Verona does not participate. Again, what can be done to make this happen? Uh, my last issue is the rat infestation. I bought my house in January of 97 in Verona and have never seen a rat in my neighborhood until a couple of weeks ago. I am seeing rats everywhere. What is the borough and or county doing to get rid of the rats? They are running everywhere on Ridge and North. Thank you, Lisa and Zinga. Okay. Um, so I don't know, do we just wanna kinda, I, I can touch on that stuff when it's my turn to talk. Okay. Okay. All right, let's do that. Any, any other registered comments? Uh, no, that's it. So okay. the next would be public comment, but I don't know if we have any considering uh, so many people spoke already, so. Okay, we'll get co public comments at the end uh, if they want okay. to adjust. So let's go to reports in the, uh, for you, Jerry. Okay, so first on the list is the meeting minutes, which Marcia sent out uh, after the last meeting. So we would need a motion to approve the meeting minutes for the workshop in September. I need a motion to accept the workshop meetings for, for September 2020. I'll make that motion. Sylvia made the, uh, Provenza made the motion. I need a second. 
Second. Second by Mr. Sachevich. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's, motion passed. Uh, last week, I sent out the financial reports to all of council and the mayor. Uh, the next thing we would need is a motion to uh, approve the bills payable list. Any motion to uh, pay the bills? I'll make a motion. The motion was made by Mr. Suchovitz. I need a second. Second. Second by Mr. Forbeck. Are there any questions? Yeah, I do. I have a couple questions. Um, uh, I'm not sure why we are still paying paychecks, Jerry. I thought this, land landmark yeah, took over. Yeah, so the uh, the audit needed we needed access to the reports for the audit, so they will be canceled here momentarily. We won't see that any anymore. Okay, and oh, then the, uh, yeah, um, Resnick, uh, are we paying them in installments, or did something extra come up for them? Do you see in the five hundred and forty dollars? Yes. That's the monthly fee for the weeding uh, okay. and the maintenance around town. That they was paid, just they did that throughout in payments instead of all in one. Okay, day. so that's part of our original amount that we ag yeah. agreed upon. Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. That's it. Thanks. Any other questions? No other questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Motion passed. Okay, next would be the tax collector and special taxes report. So September of 2020, we received $359.25 in current year real estate taxes, $2,567.22 in delinquent real estate taxes, $1,494.50 in real estate transfer taxes, $21,972.64 in earned income taxes for the current year, and $903.33 in local service taxes for the current year. We need a motion to accept the tax collector special tax. I'll make a motion. Motion Second. by Mr. Suchovic. Second by Mrs. Provenza. Are there any questions? Yeah, I do, I do. Um, I just wondered, Jerry, if, if you, uh, when the virus started, you would give us an update on where we, um, we're behind in our yeah. collections and where we were ahead and it seemed for like we were basically breaking even I just wonder if we could get an update on that yeah I don't have that in front of me tonight but I'll have that update for you for the workshop thank you very much yeah. any other questions no other questions all those in favor say aye aye uh, any no's no no's motion passed all right, my next, the treasurer's report. We begin the month of September with $329,268.73 in the general fund. We received $62,792.72 in deposits for the general fund. We had expenditures of $120,713.79 for an ending balance of $200. $71,347.66. Need a motion to accept the treasurer's report. I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Suchovitz. I need a second. I'll second it. Any questions? Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, I just was curious about a couple of things. The recreation account, that's sort of stable. Is that something that can be used for Parks and Rec or that's just kind of sitting there? What, what's up with that? Yeah, that was money that uh, it's just always been in there. It was money that was specifically earmarked for Parks and Rec. Um, if the council wanted to use it for some sort of uh, capital expenditure at the park, whether it's a, the, you know, go toward the grant match for the pavilion or whatever, <laughs> Um, that money is earmarked for recreation. Hmm. How do we know approximately how much the match is for the pavilion? I thought there was no uh, match for some reason. There's definitely a match. There's thirty. Okay. It's uh, going to be about thirty thousand dollars. Thirty. Oh. Huh. Well, that would wipe that out. But I was also wondering, in terms of the 150th celebration, if we could use that some of that money for the request that was given earlier in the meeting from that account. 
I don't see a problem with that, but I also don't see a problem with that just being part of our general fund. It's kind of an important thing. I think uh, it wouldn't be an issue to have it in the budget just as a general fund expenditure. Okay, well, it was just a thought. It just seems like that 21,000 just sits there month after month. Didn't know if we wanted to utilize it somehow. And the other question, we had talked months ago about putting that 15,000 in the recycling account. Yeah, I gotta get down the to the bank. I actually have to go down there in person. I don't have any checks for that account. I just haven't done it yet, but I'll get down there. All right, okay, thank you. Any other questions? No other questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Noes. No noes. Motion passed. Police Chief's report. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Chief. This is September. We had uh, received 202 complaints, 31 crimes reported, 24 cleared. We had 12 arrests. Uh, one crimes code summaries issued. We had 68 vehicle code summaries issued, uh, 17 borough code summaries issued, and uh, 147 borough parking tickets issued. Our revenues, the magistrate's fines collected was $575.28. Borough fines and fees collected was ten or I'm sorry, $810. Police reports purchase was $45. There were no amusement device permit fees. The municipal fines was $52.67 for total uh, fines and fees collected is $1,582.95. And then there was another $310 for uh, parking permit fees. Um, the only other thing I had, I think Annette uh, discussed it with the mayor, but um, Gloria Corrado, I think that's how you say her last name, lives at uh, 451 Union Street requested a handicapped parking space in front of her residence. She's got the proper uh, registration and paperwork done that she needed to get done. I just wanted to bring that up tonight. Craig, do we need a motion to uh, do that? I would do that in parking. the form of a motion. What's that? I would do that in the form of a motion. Okay, for the parking. Okay, we'll do two separate motions here. Is that it, Chief? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the chief, please. Uh, please, chief's report. I need a second. I'll second. Second. second by Mr. Forback. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Motion passed. We need a motion to get the uh, handicap uh, space parking for uh, 451 Union Street. I'll make that motion. Dr. Carpenter made the motion. I need a second. Second, second by Mr. Uh, Suchovich. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Jerry, would you take care of getting the uh, borough workers up to take care of that? Yes, I will. Thank you. Fire Chief's report. Um, we had nine fire calls for the month of uh, September. Um, we had the two engines get their yearly pump test today, as a matter of fact. Um, it's got to get a yearly pump test to make sure the pumps are running right. And we have a company comes in and does that. Uh, they pump well, they're all in good shape. The only problem we have with the, the older engine of 2004, it's got a vacuum leak on the, on the uh, tank fill side. So I'm gonna have to call uh, the manu or, uh, Randy, the manufacturer to come in and, uh, or the builder and look at it and see what it, it's gonna entail to get fixed. But the truck's still workable and still usable. It just has a little leak and through NFPA laws, you have to get it fixed or rules, not laws. So just giving you an update on what's going on with them. Okay, need uh, the motion to accept the fire chief's report. Make a motion to accept the fire chief's report. Motion by Ms. Lalbo to accept the fire chief's report. I need a second. Second. Second by Dave Matlin. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Motion passed. Uh, is, is Jamie Lavelle for EMS on? Yeah, let me let yes, him go. Yes. Here. Thank you. Go ahead, Jamie. Good evening. Can everybody hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. So for the uh, month of September, we had a total of 40 
911 calls in, Ver in the borough of Verona. 19 AOS calls, 12 BOS calls, one refusal, six cancellations, and a lift assist. Year to date for the borough, as of September 30th, we ran 338 calls. Uh, <coughs> total volume as of the end of September is 3,581. Okay, I need a motion to accept the EMS report. I'll make that motion. Motion by Mr. Suchovich. I need a second. Okay. I'll second it. Are there any questions? Yeah, I just wonder, um, Jamie, if it would be possible for you to get that report um, to us online before the meeting, like the Monday before the meeting. Yes, I do apologize. I've been trying to uh, get up beforehand, and I only got into the office this afternoon, and I send it over to Jerry for a few hours before the meeting starts. So I do apologize. In the future, I'll get out for you on Monday. Yeah, at the latest. I mean, if you can put it out Friday before the meeting, that'd be even better, but It'll I'd be appreciate Thursday. it. I'll yeah. give you Thursday before yeah. the meeting. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. No other Thanks, questions? Jamie. No problem. Okay. Mr. President, can I say one more thing, please, under the fire yes. chief's report? Yes. Uh, this do this we, past Sunday, what's that? Do we have a motion? Do we have to take a I'm, vote? I'm, I'm, so let's finish the, Jamie. I'm sorry. I yeah. thought you did that. I'm sorry. No. You made a motion to accept it. Yes. <laughs> I think Mr. I'll, I'll second. Seconded. I'll second. Not, Dr. Carpenter seconded. Are there any quest, other questions? No quest, No more questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Any no's? No no's motion passed. Jamie, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Sorry, Ray, go ahead. That's all right. No. I just wanted to bring the council's attention. This past Sunday night, we had a river incident. Um, about maybe five to seven, we got turned out, us in Oakmont, for a river, river issue, a man in the water. Um, when we got there, we had some trouble finding them because the call came in at Outport Haven. And long story short, the man, his boat drifted down into the the next boat dock. I'm not sure which one that is, past the townhouses where Nancy lives. And uh, this man was hanging on to his ladder for probably 25 minutes by the time we got the call. Apparently, he was on the back of his boat and uh, trying to tie it off. He came in from a from a ride and he fell in the river, was barely holding on. He's like a, I'm not sure how old he is. He's probably 72, 74, a little skinny, little frail thing with a bad shoulder. He was holding on with, to a rope and then uh, he had the person on, a, on the boat throw down the ladder and he held on to that. But they couldn't pull him up, they kept pulling him up and he'd go, he'd fall back down in. Long story short, we. We got there pretty quick in Oakmont and we averted a potential bad issue because this guy was barely holding on to the ladder. Uh, Lower Valley was apparently busy and Plum, uh, their backup company, Plum, came in and, and uh, transported him to the hospital. And he was released Monday with some stitches and some, so, so he's fine. But, you know, if there's any talk going on around, that did happen and, and uh, the guy's in good shape now, so. Just wanted to, you know, you hear all the bad stuff. You just want to give out something good for a change. So that's all. Thank you. No, thank you. Anything else, Jerry? <laughs> yeah, so a couple things. I think uh, the last thing that's on my agenda is about the permit fees that I believe Craig is going to discuss yes. during his time. So I can defer that to him. Uh, just to go over a couple things regarding uh, Lisa and Zynga's uh, comment. So I believe I talked to Craig about this earlier. I believe it's actually not act 77 and Craig can, can, can correct me, but there is an act that permits the borough to give a 30% uh, discount on real estate taxes. Uh, I did speak with Mrs. Nzinga um, several months ago about this. Uh, you know, it ultimately it would be up to council. I'm not going to make any friends by what I'm going to say, but I would be cautious on doing that. Um, 
I don't know what kind of financial impact that's going to have on the community. Um, there is a sizable senior population in Verona and giving a 30% discount could drastically impact the budget. So I don't know how we would research that because I don't know how you could find out how old everybody is. Um, and it's certainly something the council can do, but I think before we were to take that step, there is some serious studying that need to, would need to be happening because you could see a 10 to 15 to 20% drop in payroll or in property tax revenue um, pretty much overnight. So um, if council would like, we can try to figure out a way to do that research, um, but that's where that is. Uh, as far as county hauling goes, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do that because we're in the middle of a contract with them. Um, we could definitely take it under advisement if we decided to renew that contract or for whenever we put it back out to bid. Uh, we can check and see if they would extend that senior discount, even though we're in the middle of the contract. Uh, we can definitely do that research. Um, and then the final thing, the rat infestation. Uh, this is not something that we are ignoring um, or pretending is not an issue. It is definitely an issue. Um, in fact, we reached out to uh, Bill Grill Extermination to see what kind of price they would give us to do traps and baiting throughout the community. Um, we definitely have an issue that we're trying to work out, uh, but uh, it is a process and we're trying to work it out in the different sections of the community that are being impacted. Uh, any residents that have overgrown yards or anything, is, any issues like that, we're trying to deal with it with code enforcement. Mark is on it, um, but, and we're trying to get pricing. Uh, we did reach out to the county health department to see if there's anything that they can do. We're waiting to hear back and we're also waiting for pricing from Bill Grill. So it is definitely something that we're working on, but I don't have an answer besides that right now. Okay, thank yeah. you. Jerry, uh, I just yeah. wanted to ask, or maybe uh, our solicitor knows, in terms of the 30% um, discount for seniors, would that not um, be an issue, maybe if people would show financial hardship, like if they make below a certain amount, then they can get the 30% discount? Then it wouldn't be all the seniors that live in Verona? I don't know the answer. I'm just I, asking. I don't think that there's any sort of mechanism for somebody to show us their financial hardship at the moment. And I don't believe that this act may, does it that way. This is a state law that was passed that we can or we have the option to opt into. Um, and I believe, and Craig can correct me if I'm wrong, that this act, it's not Act 77, but whatever that act is, uh, it doesn't say it doesn't have any sort of stipulation on financial condition. Um, it's just that if you are over a certain age that you could get a discount on your property taxes. Um, some municipalities do it. The county does it um, automatically. The I don't believe Riverview School District does it. Um, and some communities do it and some don't. So Verona at the moment does not do it. Um, so council would have to determine whether or not um, they would like to research that. But it, it would be, I, I would say that it's going to be a sizable amount of money. Hmm. All right. I, I did look at that when, when the request came in and when I heard Act 77, I'm familiar with Act 77 of 2019. That's the uh, Election Reform Act that Governor Wolf signed last year that permitted the early voting by uh, mail-in ballots that we've not been able to do before that. So I, I dug a little bit deeper and, and it actually is Act 77. I didn't think it was, but it's Act 77 of 2000 uh, as opposed to 2019. Um, and it's called the Senior Citizens Tax Relief Act. And what it does is it provides the 30% the to uh, senior citizens over the age of 65 and there's only three criteria, so you, you can't you can't limit it those to uh, senior citizens that can demonstrate financial hardship. Uh, that's probably a little bit subjective, 
but uh, there's three criteria. You have to be 65 years old or older. You have to either own your property or have a lease uh, on the property for which you uh, pay the real estate taxes. And the big thing is it has to be your primary residence too. So if your primary residence is in Florida to take advantage of tax savings down there, but yet you reside up here for six months, you don't, you don't qualify. So those are the three criteria for the Senior Citizens Tax Act of uh, 2000. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Is that it, Jerry? Yeah, that's it for me. Okay, thank you. Mayor Recupero. Uh, yeah, I have a couple questions. Um, on the new car that, uh, the, uh, that we're getting, uh, why did we get it up in Mercer? He, uh, we first got our quote from Schultz and they came in at almost 40,000 just for the vehicle. Um, when we were talking to Ibis Tech about it, they said that McCandless Ford had, uh, had some on the lot and that they would do way better than that. And, uh, and they did. That's why we went with them. Um, I believe the last time we talked about this car, it, uh, came in at 33,000 from Schultz. Cause that's, yeah, that's what, what it came in from. Yeah, that's, that's what you had mentioned last meeting. Uh, the chief and I, when we got our initial quote, it was, uh, it was almost 40. I think it was 39 and change. I'm sure he still has it. He signed off. He was working until 4 a.m. last night. So, um, uh, so I don't have that in front of me. But whenever we started this process, Schultz came in at almost $40,000, which was shocking to me because that's about what we paid for a Tahoe. Uh, so that's why we expanded um, our, because, our search. Um, price store was about the same price at 33,000. We need to look into that price again. Um, if, um, if this company in um, Mercer, if they're on the, uh, the government, um, whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, that, that's a lot of money for that. Yeah, the coast. It's a co-stars bid at thirty-three, three ninety-eight, or something like that, I believe. The um, the one we're getting now is thirty-three, eight thirty-nine. Okay, yeah, I got my numbers mixed up. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's okay. a co-stars price. Okay. Um, the other thing is, yeah. Um, the other thing is. Um, the color was not stated on there. What color was chosen? Black. Why black? Mike, you to the head of the police committee. Why did, why did you? That was that was what the uh, the chief and the police wanted, and uh, and the police committee agreed to it, and that's why. I, we went with black. Okay. Um, you have the stripes as the ghost stripes, just like the other car. Why did we go with that? Why not uh, let people know it's the Verona Police Department, you know, with pride, rather than trying to hide the stripes like the other car? You know, when we do something in my department as mayor, I want to be involved in this, to sit down with the police chief, with the borough manager and the police committee and discuss everything. The last one you bought in 2018, I had no recollection, recollection of buying that car. At the meeting, they said the car is over in the garage. Everybody come and look at it. I left and Craig and I had talked. He called me to ask me to come back down. And that really irritated me that I knew nothing about that car. I am in charge of the police department. I need to know what's going on in my department. I know very little that goes on in my department and that's wrong. I've told this board before. The last board I told also, I was in exec sessions for nine months complaining. I am in charge of the police department. It's my department. Let me in on the decisions. You know, it's not what the employees want. 
It's what the board wants and what's best for the community as far as money goes also. So we got two black cars. We got two cars with uh, the ghost stripes. Um, I don't know, doesn't nobody have, and I'm not saying everybody on the board, but doesn't anybody have the pride to you know, have Verona police on there? I think it would look very nice, just like every other community. You want an unmarked car? I don't have a problem with that, but let me in on it so I can give my input as head of the police department. Now we have four cars. I don't want four cars. We're getting rid of some of these cars. We've never ever had that many police cars. And I understand Mark uses one and he'll continue to use one. Actually, so let's if you get on, you know, let's get. <laughs> if you count the Explorer and the uh, Crown Vic, we have, with the new one, we would have five. Well, we're going to get rid of the Crown Vic. We've talked, we're not going to keep five cars. So we need to get rid of the white Explorer also, and we could put the silver one as a backup and Mark can use the silver one because the white one, I believe, also has lights on it. So it's not a big deal. We don't need that many cars in this community. I, as mayor, don't want four police cars sitting there for, what do I got? Four part-timers and three full-timers, including the chief. I think that Mark's car is considered a code enforcement vehicle, not a police car. Well, it, I believe it has some lights on it. It does not. So, I mean, we use it for traffic when we have parades. No, we do not. No, we do not. That car, the cage is coming out of that car and going in the new Explorer. That was a marked vehicle with a rooftop light bar that our car has no lights on it anymore. It is an unmarked former police car that is used as a code enforcement vehicle. And when Mark uses it, there's a magnet stuck to the side that says Verona Borough Code Enforcement. I don't want yes, Mark I, using I his personal vehicle. But I, I don't want him in anything. Have to use I don't want him in a marked police car. I don't want. I don't even want a net in a marked police car. It's dangerous. And I've already talked to my officers about using this new police car, and they thanked me for letting them use it because I'm not going to go through what we did on the other one, where only the full timers were allowed to use the brand new one. That's not going to happen again. I will fight this board. My officers, yeah. even though they're part time or they're part time, they are police officers just like my full time officers are, and they will use this car. I'll be the deciding factor on that. And if the board wants to challenge me, so be it. Then I don't believe anybody's going to challenge you on that. That was always the intention. Well, they did the last time. It was it was agreed to wait a month to let the full timers use it, then go into service. I waited six months. And all of a sudden, it was rescinded the motion to uh, just let the three full timers. And you had a lot of angry officers because they felt let down by this board. They may not tell you, but they tell me because I talk to them. And it's not going to happen again. I'm going to tell you all right now. I want to be involved with any decision, the budget, everything, or else I will veto that budget. The other thing I have, Matt, um, is there any chance of getting these new, uh, you know, the street lights, the LEDs, you know, on another program to, you know, go through the town on some of these other streets? When you, you mean like the overhead Cobra lights, not the traffic lights? Yeah, the, the, yeah, the street street lights. Yeah. On the, on the, in the blocks. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, we did that last when, one. That program. Uh, Duquesne Light. I believe that they're doing that program again. I will make myself a note here to look into it. Um, I, I believe as long as their funds are available, they offer that every year. So I'll see if it's good. I'm, again, if I we mean, can look in the streets. Yeah, I mean, you know, board willing, I hope that uh, we can get on that program again and get another hundred streetlights because it does really improve the uh, brightness throughout the community. True. Well, it does I do know, that. I know they but, did all major. <clears throat> it does do that, but I got to say, not everybody is a fan of uh, everything being lit up like it's daytime. So, you know, 
I don't know, every other one or something. It's, it's, I don't like them personally. Uh, uh, are you talking, first I've heard. Dave, are you talking about replacing existing um, older lamps with LED bulbs or are you talking about putting in new, all, all together, new fixtures? No, putting the bulbs in like they did. We, we got a hundred of them, if you remember. Yeah, yeah, no, I, Street, North yeah I, no, I understand. I was just making sure I understood correctly, but yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I, I, I Are think we it going to have... The area, you know. it's, it's light pollution, Go if ahead. you ask me. It's too much. Dave, are we going to be permitted to have those in the alleys also? Some of these alleys are dark. Well, that's what I'm getting at, yeah. I, will, no, I know I will we have be, some on our main streets, but I'm asking, what about the alleys? Do we have, uh, is that part of that funding for alleys also? I'll look into that program again. Uh, one of the main things that they had as a stipulation last time is you needed 10 consecutive lights because um, they, as a program, they didn't want to be doing one light on North Avenue and then skipping over the South Avenue and doing one light. When they sent their crews out to do the work, they wanted to kind of work one street at a time. Oh, um, yeah. I did get confirmation from them though, if the street's not long enough and it doesn't have 10 lights on it, as long as you're staying on that street, they don't have a, a problem with that. So some of the alleys could be candidates if the program's available again. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, so I, I'll definitely look into it though. Good, thank you, Matt, appreciate it. All right, thank you, Matt. Um, so is there one other thing? No, the uh, chief took care of the handicap. Um, for some reason, I think there's one more thing, but if I think of it, I'll um, ask to speak again, but that's all I have at this time. Okay, thank you, Mayor. I have nothing at this time. Mr. Pitch. Yes, thank you. Uh, I did have one typo on my report. The uh, PA small water and sewer, the the pre-cleaning and the CCTV work, that was actually uh, completed September 20th, not October 20th. Um, and I, I have to thank the road crew for their help. Uh, at the end of Ridge there, we had a buried manhole that was about eight foot deep. Uh, they did a phenomenal job digging between the water line and the gas line to expose it. And they're in the process of bringing it up to grade. So uh, they're doing a great job on that. Um, I did see with the uh, slated plans for the 150th, um, the party at Cribs Field July 18th. Um, under the, the pavilion project, we should be done before then. I am gonna double check. Um, the contract is 180 days. Talking with the contractor, um, our goal is for fall and winter, we'll have the existing one demoed and concrete poured, uh, depending on weather, uh, we, we might be able to get some block work up and possibly be under roof before some weather moves in, uh, and then finishing all interior finishes come spring. So I, I don't see an issue with that, um, the party at the field. Uh, we should have a nice new pavilion for that celebration. Um, hey, Matt? Yes. Matt, on, on, the, on the pavilion, and we talked about this briefly, um, you know, we wanted to see if we could get these those cameras as part of this grant as we could do a change order yes I, I got your email i didn't have a chance to review it in depth um but we we do have some uh wiggle room on the, on the project um with the way the grant works is it's a um 85 grant funds 15 percent match funds we're awarded up to two hundred thousand in grant funds so to to max out that two hundred thousand we have to spend the 30 30,000 match amount. Um, and as we sit right now, uh, with all the items awarded, even all the, the ad items for appliances and everything, we're only at 201,000. So we do have some wiggle room to, um, like I, we discussed, um, maybe going with a little bit nicer of a, a marquee uh, board there, and such as adding some cameras there. We, we have some wiggle room that uh, will work out through change orders. Uh, Matt? Yes. Uh, on the um, cameras, I actually spoke with uh, Mr. Zapala today. We will be meeting sometime this week. And uh, I've already talked to him about the field 
and that will be part of it. Okay. So we're in control with that. Thank you. Uh, and then as, as far as the, the sewer lining along uh, First Street there, uh, we have the, the contracts back. We're just waiting for the county to proceed with those. Uh, as soon as those are ready to go, we want to get the, the sewer lined, and then we'll have the, the First Street reconstruction happening right behind it. Um, due to the weather and, and asphalt involved, that, that construction probably won't take place until springtime. Um, but we wanted to make sure we shored up all the utilities under the road so we didn't end up uh, cutting into a nice new road. Um, and then just a few items that didn't make the, um, the agenda and maybe one thing was what the mayor was talking about. Um, I did get in touch with PennDOT on the pedestrian timing on uh, Allegheny River Boulevard, especially at Center Avenue. Um, I had submitted to them revised plans because um, with PennDOT, everything has to go through them and be permitted. Uh, so we did some new timing calculations and we were able to add a few seconds to the, the pedestrian timing. Um, and we uh, uh, asked them to be allowed to put up some additional signage uh, along the lines of yield for pedestrians, uh, just warning motorists. Uh, so I'm just waiting for feedback on them. Uh, and then as soon as we would get the okay from PennDOT, we can move forward with those adjustments. Uh, and then the other thing is uh, the North Avenue paving, uh, painting. Uh, we do have those one set of lines down as a, a test product. Uh, I had been in contact with a couple other companies. Unfortunately, those types of paints, they require the, the actual truck to come out and they have minimums for mobilization. Most of them were in the 1000 to 1200 range. Um, which we just didn't feel was a, a good enough price just to do a, a couple test lines. Uh, so we did look at it, um, and th there's a couple different products. One's offered through Granger. I think we're going to probably be ordering a, a gallon or two of it and, and trying to do some more um, testing with different products just to see what our best bet is on the bricks. And then the, the only other thing I have. Um, uh, it was brought up a, a few meetings ago. Uh, the road crew and myself looked at uh, Wood Street there. Um, so we took the, the sweeper truck up and we, we dumped some water down the road to, to see kind of how it flowed. There is one minor issue on if you're looking up, up the hill on the left-hand side. Uh, it, it really isn't the, the new pavement. Uh, the water starts to divert away from the curb uh, about five feet above where the new pavement line is. Um, watching the flow though, that's that's dumping a large amount of water. For the amount of water that we would get during um, a snow melt or a, a rain, uh, we don't think it's gonna be an issue. So AJ and the guys are gonna keep an eye on it. Um, just about the only option we have at this point would be to mill some of the asphalt out and replace it. Um, but we were, we were hoping maybe to do that next year and get a, a bigger patch of it rather than doing a, a little four foot by four foot area. Um, and like I said, for, for a, a slow snow melt or a, a rain that we'll get this time of year, uh, most of the water, it's, it's about 50-50 going to the drain running on the road. Uh, so they're just gonna keep an eye on it. And if they need to, they'll, they'll put some extra salt in that area to prevent any icing. And that's all I have unless there's any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pitch. Mr. Alexander. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, a few things, if you give me one second here. Uh, first is to talk about the uh, vacant property recovery plan. There's a notation on the agenda for me. Uh, Brooke Gwynn, the project manager for the vac uh, vacant pro uh, property recovery program. Uh, we are preparing our agenda for our October meeting. Please let her know when we may expect the property to be considered if approved. Please for a copy of the resolution. Mark asked for that to be placed on the agenda. Apparently it uh, pertains to lot and block 364-P-312 and the borough has to pass a resolution in order to get uh, the county to dispose of that uh, vacant property and get it back onto the tax rolls. So 
I received a, a copy of the resolution. I, I have to fill it in, but I am going to ask that council consider it this evening. It's a resolution of uh, Council of the Borough of Verona approving that the acquisition and subsequent dis disposition of vacant property known as Lock and Block 364-P-312 would be in accord with the comprehensive plan of the municipality. And that's a resolution that has to be passed to get these vacant properties uh, back on the tax rolls. Mark has reviewed this and uh, has requested that council approve it. So I'm going to ask uh, the president to request a motion for approval of that resolution. At this time, I'll uh, ask that a resolution for the vacant property uh, be made. I need a motion to accept it. I'll make the motion. I need a second. I'll second. Second by Mr. Suchovich. Is there, are there any questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, where Where is that? Do you I have can any? send you the information, Nancy. Uh, I have two. Can you give me a second. I'm just a little confused. I don't remember doing this in the past is for yes. other people who have acquired vacant lots. So I'm not sure, I'm not, I don't know what this is. It's always been done, at least I believe it's been done. Uh, from my recollection, because I do it in every community that they pass a resolution. I believe we passed a resolution a few months ago here in Verona, but I'm not certain of that. Is this a re okay a resolution every time someone wants to acquire a vacant lot? Every time the Allegheny County oh. Vacant Property Program approves it, Verona Borough has to pass a corresponding resolution. It only involves the count when the county is involved, not when individuals buy them. Oh, okay. So that's the difference. This is something that a vacant property that the county is acquiring. Not Nancy. It's not, and <laughs> the county wants to get this on their October agenda, and they can't do it without the borough resolution. Okay, I'm just, I'm I'm just confused because I I don't know what this is or what. <laughs> I've never heard of it before right now. Is this, Craig, is this so that the county, is this so that someone else can requ can acquire this land through the county's vacant lot, lot program? That's exactly what it is. Okay. So I guess, Nancy, maybe what was talked about as a potential course for the community garden, I'm not saying this is what will happen, but if if someone were to go through that vacant lot recovery program, this is that program. So the county administers it to, uh, I guess, to provide the, the, the benefits of, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Craig, but I think you get a free and clear title and, uh, or you get some kind of deduction in uh, the cost that you pay to acquire it. You're not, you're not subject to liens or any other, uh, mm -hmm their title and the property owner pays a, a nominal fee for for the lot for whatever the county believes it should be charging the property owners absolutely it's what angela talked to us about last month yeah. or last meeting yeah exactly it gets so it back on the tax rolls i wish I, I i wish i could find the attachments they go back to november uh we just got this a couple of days ago so this would be a process that we would go through for every vacant lot that would potentially want to be acquired by somebody, but it has to go to the county first. The, the property owner fills out an application. They fill out a, a vacant property, uh, Allegheny County vacant property application. That application gets vetted through Allegheny County and this uh, Gwyn that is on the agenda. The county then determines whether the application is in order, and then they send it back to Verona Borough to pass a resolution accepting it, and then it goes back to the county to, for approval, and then it gets placed back on the tax rolls. 
So somebody is asking to eventually be the owner of this vacant lot. They filed an application, they've been approved. The county has sent it back to Verona. Okay, but we don't know. I mean, I don't have an objection to it. I'm just trying to understand it. Let's stop on this for a moment. We'll come back to it. I mean, it's just, it, we'll, let me finish up with my report. We'll go on to other people's reports. I'll find the actual. And we can revisit it. Okay, so we're gonna, what, what about the motion that's on the floor right now? Can we hold the motion and let you, you finish up and then we'll come back to the motion? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we talked about the Tax Relief Act. With regard to the rat infestation, uh, I wanted to just touch on that. Uh, Mark and I had gone up to Judge Anthony DeLuca's office probably three, four, five months ago and obtained administrative search warrants to go on to a number of properties that uh, residents were complaining about rat infestation. I know Mark had found a couple places and, and required some extermination. I think somebody mentioned grills. I think that they were involved in that as well. Immediately preceding tonight's uh, hearing, tonight's meeting, we held a uh, public hearing on the Miller lot consolidation uh, plan. I'm not sure whether that's on the agenda somewhere else, but a motion would be in order to either approve or reject that lot consolidation. Make that motion to um, approve the lot consolidation on Penn Street. There's a motion on the floor by Dr. Carpenter to accept the uh, lot consolidation on Penn Street. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Provenza. Are there any questions? No, that wasn't me, Pat. I think oh, it was I thought Janet. Janet. Janet, Janet, I'm sorry. I thought it was Ms. L That's second by Ms. Loyalba. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Motion passed. Uh, we received a right to no uh, appeal from a request from something called the Quatrone Project. It's with the uh, Penn Law School, and they sent it around to every municipality asking for various police manuals and uh, things with regard to investigations, uh, lineup investigations, video investigations, audio investigations, and interrogations. And the chief and I met on this a couple weeks ago. I collected some data from him. I prepared a response and as we were sitting here today I, I saw that the uh, well, Patron project requester had sent a note to the uh, Office of o Open Records withdrawing that appeal so what we sent them did satisfy their right to no request. I think Laura Jacko mentioned the zoning ordinances been, being out of date and Nancy might have some follow-up on this but I had forwarded to her uh, a couple names of uh, companies within other communities that I represent who have gone through updating their zoning ordinances. So we, may, we might want to look at one of them to move forward on that. We're still looking into the county hauling issues. And Mark uh, is asking me to move forward on potential civil, civil litigation with regard to contractors at Verona Gardens putting on a roof that's going to be referred to committee and we'll take that up at our monthly ordinance and committee meeting uh, code committee meeting and that's all I have I'll go back and try to find who <laughs> the applicant is in that vacant property all right we're going to move on and then we'll come back to that with the uh, pending uh, vote okay while you're looking that up Craig <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Matlin. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I had one item on the agenda, um, was the, the tree pruning bid spec. I wanted to get that, uh, try to get that finalized and voted on. I, I sent it out, uh, the, uh, the updated revisions to council <clears throat> a few days ago. Um, Matt got back to me with some, um, he had some good input and comments this morning. Um, I didn't have a chance to respond to him 
Um, but I think there's probably some good um, suggestions that you had, Matt, that, that I think we might want to incorporate. So um, I was hoping to get a vote on it so we could get it rolling, but I guess um, I'm wondering what the best way to handle it might be if, if I update it with Matt's uh, suggestions and maybe get it out to council. Uh, would we, would we have to vote at the next meeting or is there any, we could, we could look at it and uh, then Mr. Kenny could do a phone vote and then ratify it at the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. If that's, if that's good, then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get that out hopefully later this week to, to hey, council your, after I talk to Matt. Hmm? Is your intention to get bids so that we can put it on the, on the budget for next year and do it in the spring or are you hoping to get it done before the end of the year? I was hoping to get a contract by the end of the year so that they could, um, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a decent time window. I think we really want them to do the pruning during dormant season. So, uh, November, December timeframe up through maybe February or March. Um, so I think, I don't know how we'd want to do it as far as the budget. If we, my, I, mean, I don't my want to suggestion. Jam them. Yeah, go ahead. My suggestion would be to try to get the bid, get the numbers, get it in the budget, mm -hmm. and then try to have it done in the first couple months of the year. Because uh, there's, I mean, do, do we have the cash to do it? Yes. But there is no line item right now for tree, tree pruning. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, if we need to make it happen, we can make it happen. But the proper thing to do would be to put it on the, on the budget for next year so that and do it at the beginning of the year i definitely in during the the dormant time but to include that cost in the 2021 budget yeah i'm good with that i think we were gonna what we had talked about was was waiting to see what the we weren't sure what the prices were going to come in at and at anyway yeah. so right. um so yeah we can bring it up and at, at least uh but I, I think you're right i think we should move forward because we're i'm in i'm in budget mode so yeah, we want to try to get it, uh, get those numbers as soon as we can. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So I'll I'll talk to Matt and uh, try to get those updates and get it off to council. Um, I did want to mention uh, something Matt and I had talked about was um, that was brought to my attention by some residents was the uh, the curb and the sidewalk at the corner of. Um, the alley between first and maple and south. Um, I don't know if anyone's noticed that, but it's since COVID hit, it's, it's gotten, it's deteriorated severely. Um, there's some speculation by some folks that, or, or rumors, or I'm not sure if anyone witnessed it. I'm trying to find that out, but there's talk of that County Hauling's trucks may have caused this damage. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll look into seeing whether there's any remediation through them, but, um, and I think we were going to check with Mark on whether, um, whether that would be something that would be the borough's responsibility or the property owner's responsibility. I think, Matt, you, you kind of thought, and I thought the same thing, that it's probably because it's a, it's, it's at a alley, it's at a curb, um, at a corner, uh, that it, it might might be the borough's responsibility or something we would typically handle. Um, is that, am I portraying that correctly, Matt? Yeah, and I, I talked to Mark on that and he said it, when it involves those ramps and corners like that, mm -hmm. uh, it's not fair to necessarily put that on to a homeowner being that it's vehicle damage and mm -hmm. not the normal wear and tear. Um, and I did talk to the, the, the guys at the Public Works um, if we were going to try to replace it kind of in kind where it's just a uh, kind of a sloped curb in a, in a slab, uh, they felt pretty confident that they could handle something like that in house. If we were going to go more the route of updating it to ADA standards, that's something that we would probably have to look at contracting out. Okay. Um, so that may be something Jerry that we can uh, talk with Matt about putting in the budget. Um, I think, uh, I, I think because it's so close to Werner and it's on South, it's a pretty, I think it's a heavily traveled sidewalk. I think if we're going to repair it, I would like to see it brought up to ADA ramp standards. Um, 
and, and Matt Matt suggested, and I agree that it's it's on the one side that's that's the damage, and the opposite side of the alley. Um, I mean, you really should do both. So um, I think it's one of the few in that stretch of South that doesn't have um, a ramp or isn't accessible by a wheelchair or stroller. So, um, so I'll work with you guys to, to try to figure out a game plan there. Um, I, I guess, let's see, I, I have not heard any updates um, as far as County Hauling and the, uh, the, um, the, the violation that they were given by the County. I don't know, Mike, if you've heard anything about DEP or when they might, uh, potentially issue any kind of ruling on that? I talked to them last week and they're, they, um, they haven't gotten together on that particular item yet mm -hmm. for the, on the statewide. Um, they're going to try to get information from the, uh, from Allegheny County and work with it. I'm going to be talking to, um, the DEP this week. So I'll see what, if anything else has come up. Okay. Thanks. Um, Another thing, uh, Jerry, do you have a monthly uh, DPW report or summer? Uh, you know what I did? I forgot to send it out. I'll send it out to you. Okay. Sorry about that, Dave. Thanks. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Alexander, you look like you got information. I do have uh, a follow-up on the recovery program. It's located at 716 East Railroad. Uh, the applicant is a Ronald and uh, Joanne McCarrison, it looks like. And on the application, they ask what they would uh, consider doing with the property should the county award it to them. And they said uh, a side yard and a possible single car garage. It's tw the lot is 2,800 square feet. So that's what uh, the resolution is for. And it goes back to the county with some other documentation that I have to prepare, but uh, they can't do anything without the res without Verona authorizing uh, the county to do that project. A lot of noise. Yeah, I don't know why. Someone's rustling papers right by their microphone. Okay, based on that information, there is a motion on the floor to accept uh, to make a resolution for the to go to the county. Uh, I don't recall who made the mo. I, I made the motion and who right. seconded it. I think Mr. Suchovich and Dr. Carpenter had the question. Are there any other questions? Did everybody hear what I said? If if, there, if my papers were rustling, I can repeat it. You said it was. 716 oh, East Railroad. I'm just trying to visualize it. I can't. Yeah, that would be right at the Borough that. Park. It's yeah. uh, it's between James and Grant Street. Close. 700. That's the same block as the same borough, as borough building. building. It's and it's the same side of the street as the Borough yeah. Building, isn't it? It's an even you, number. Uh, are, yeah. Are you talking about McCarrison, what the one who wants to buy the prop, get the property? Okay. Yeah. Yes, McCarrison. Yeah, that's between James Street and Grant Street. The address is wrong then. That would probably be the 500 block. Craig, what maybe. was the what was the lot number you or the uh, parcel five number? Six. Oh, maybe I said seven one six. It's five one six East Railroad yeah. Street. Oh, okay. five that one six. Block. Wouldn't that be the railroad property side? Well, that's what I'm thinking. It's an even number. I think it's, Craig, what's the parcel number? It three, is 364 dash P dash 312. If I look up 364 dash P dash 312, it pulls up 515 East Railroad, which oh, I believe is the property that was demoed uh -huh. back in May. Okay, exactly. Uh, yeah, oh. Okay. okay. 515, 16. But it's obviously 515 then. Yes. That makes more sense. That makes all kinds of sense. Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay. Thank you. No. For, are there any further questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any noes? No noes. Mo the resolution passes. So I have one last thing. I apologize. I forgot to okay. bring my uh, report. Mark asked uh, that 
the borough consider amending the fee schedule. We set out a fee schedule every year for certain things. He uh, found some additional permit fees, which he would like to include on the schedule, uh, some demolition fees, some sign fees, and now roll away dumpster fees. Uh, he's asking that the borough consider permits for uh, demolition permits for a dwelling or duplex for $75, a multifamily per unit of $50 commercial demolition permit, $150 and industrial demolition, $250. With regard to signs, he's requesting that the fee schedule be changed to include uh, building signs, permit $50, $50 freestanding signs, $100, and with rollaway dumpsters, he's asking that the board consider amending the fee schedule to include a uh, $35 permit fee for $10 in all locations within the borough except Allegheny River Boulevard between Wildwood Road and Center Street with a $110 extension for $15. And then for Allegheny River Boulevard between Center Street and Wildwood Road, it's $75 for 10 days. And it's a resolution of the Borough of Verona, Allegheny County, amending the 2020 fee schedule to add additional fees for certain demolition sign and roll away dumpster permits. Do we have to advertise this in any way before we we, not. We, we, we pass our fee schedule by resolution. The enabling ordinances all state that you can pass your fee schedules by resolution. There's no advertisement required. Okay. Now, Aren't these um, <laughs> these fees are being requested because not because we're changing them, but because we just don't have them right now notated anywhere. Is that correct? Correct. Mark is breaking it down and asking that these fees be further detailed into the fee ordinance. Okay. There's a motion on the floor to. I'll make the motion that we increase the fees that uh, for this resolution. I'll second. Second by Dr. Carpenter. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Resolution passed. Thanks, everybody. Sorry about that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Okay. Dr. Carpenter. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, before I begin my report, I just want to ask Dave a quick question. Is there anything further on the stop sign thing? This what you were research you were doing and and all of that um yeah i sent it to matt um if i remember correctly matt i think you're still looking at it i was in town today reviewing the last of them i should have it typed up with my recommendations to you tomorrow great yeah. thank you okay thank you for that update um okay uh in lieu or uh, as a result of the comments that were made at the last meeting regarding um, ducks, rabbits, and chickens in the uh, animal ordinance, we are looking at revisions for that. Um, so uh, we've gotten some wording, just, just as, a, as a, a way to start off from other um, municipalities uh, I got to say that uh, it, this is a difficult situation because there's people who want them and people who are concerned about the um, challenge of enforcement and potential abuse causing smelliness and noise and so on and so forth. So uh, I think that we're going to work on revising some of that wording. There would be restrictions and guidelines to having animals if we put it in there. And the potential that we would discuss at the next ordinance meeting of maybe putting a newsletter article in and really finding out from the community, you know, where a lot of people stand on this. And if we get no response, then we'll go with the feedback that we got at the meeting from two weeks ago. And, and try to put some wording in to include that. So therefore, um, we're postponing the advertising of that ordinance as well as the short-term rental ordinance because I just don't wanna have to spend that money for advertising twice. 
So we'll be working on that um, between now and the ordinance meeting, which will be the fourth Monday of October. Um, so that's what's going on with those. Uh, in the meantime, we're working on some other ordinances uh, involving building permit fees, the nuisance um, uh, calls uh, for the fire and police, and uh, a few other things. I also wanted to mention, uh, Craig, uh, maybe help me out with this. I believe that we have a Shade Tree Commission vacancy, and Kim Roller has asked to be in that um, position. Would this be? Didn't we, didn't we do that at the workshop? Oh, oops. Did we do that we did, at the workshop? We? Okay. All right. Never mind. Sorry. Um, as it, in regard to the planning commission vacancies, I believe there are two vacancies there. And um, I just was wondering if we could put together a, a plan to advertise those vacancies and collect some more letters of interest. We have one letter of interest at this point. Uh, I'd like to see if we could fill those other two vacancies uh, before the end of the year. Mr. Kenneth can uh, put them out on Facebook and advertise it, and hopefully we'll get some more response and uh, get those filled as quickly as we can. I don't think anybody really even reads the newspaper and stuff like that. I think the Facebook, social media, whatever social media we right. get out there in the borough webpage is probably the best form of advertisement, I guess. Why don't Absolutely. we put it in the newsletter? We can put it in there as well, but we're going to point out this. mentioned that earlier. Because you're when targeting it, all our own people this way. When is the next due date for the newsletter? Monday, November 30th. Okay. All right. Well, I was hoping maybe to fill them before then. So well, I don't, you know. Nancy, what I mean, I think. Facebook's a good idea. What about we could advertise it through the community group, through email. Um, I think what we could also do is advertise the planning commission meetings. Um, I don't even know when they, I mean, I, I think I know when they meet, but I don't know whether they have meetings every month. I don't know if the public knows much about when they meet. So I think that would help. They're, they're advertised in, in January for, for a monthly meeting, but it's only on an as needed basis. There's rarely, mm -hmm much that goes in front of the planning commission i think they may have convened two or three times this year not as even... needed is when they meet they yeah. have no regular scheduled meetings yeah that's not and i understand that um but i think we could do a better job of of getting the word out to the public when they do meet um because i know they met about i mean I, I know we talk about it at the council meetings but just you know just a suggestion for for everyone to consider to to try to get people more people interested and, and aware that that this is a commission that they do important work same with the zoning hearing board um they both do important work and um I, you know I, and that's kind of independent of of the current app, application but um but i think i'd be glad to help spread the word and, and get the word out any way we can nancy yeah could we maybe uh put a time uh, limit on when that would be ready to go uh, and when, like, a, let's see, what is this, October 13th, maybe try to have all the applications in by November 15th, a month from now, and then we can consider it at the November, uh, the November workshop. Does that sound feasible? That's that's probably the best way to do it at this time. All right, so that's what's happening there. Um, and the only other thing I, I just wanted to mention again about the rats, that, that is on the agenda for the ordinance meeting on October 26th. And I have talked with Mark about this situation as well. Um, and I just wanted to ask something about, um, in regards to the, um, Timing for crossing the street. That's great news, Matt. Thank you. And I just wonder if the um, our our guys 
could start thinking about um, painting the crosswalks. Uh, there are many places where there's stop signs where the word stop in white on the road has completely faded away. Um, they did such a great job on the curbs and the handicap painting, uh, handicap painting in the central area and surrounding areas looks very sharp. They put the lines down on East Railroad. That's looking very good. So I was hoping that, you know, given the great fall weather we're having, maybe they could start um, freshening up by the stop signs and the crosswalks. Uh, that might, you know, remind motorists to stop and yield to pedestrians. And I think that's all I have right now. Thank you, Dr. Carpenter. Mr. Forbat. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, a few things. Um, one, we did have our first meeting with the Comprehensive Plan Committee, um, more of an introduction type of uh, meeting. Uh, I gave them a boatload of home to, to review um, uh, model uh, plans and so forth. And our next meeting um, will be a virtual meeting and we plan on inviting um, a couple of the consultants that actually do the work um, to talk about what they, they can offer and, and to educate the, the folks more on the, on the plan. Um, the, uh, I, as, uh, from the workshop, I had an uh, assignment to look up for paper recycling, uh, see if there's any uh, a revised paper recycling. I did contact DEPN, Allegheny County, and I found out a, a company in Springdale called Stenson Paper Recycling uh, does offer paper recycling and they do cater towards local municipalities and they do offer free bins for municipalities, especially if we have ten, within 10 uh, miles of their facility. Uh, they, they also have uh, received a lot of complaints from the other recycling uh, facility that, that we're using, the uh, um, they uh, they do uh, they also have this is this is what I like they have a a once a week pickup regardless of whether it's filled or not so they do have a routine pickup that so that would keep the um, the the paper bins uh, at a minimum and the other thing they do offer is a rebate of uh, based on market price of recycling anything over forty five dollars a ton that money will go to the municipality um, where it's collected in addition to the 904 grant. Um, I sent that over to you, to Jerry, and I, I said we'd talk in council and we'd get back to them and, and if we want to consider it to go that route. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to talk about that now, but um, maybe we could talk more in workshop, but it's, it's, it sounds like it's a, it's a good alternative. Um, we should, we should look into that and by the workshop, we, uh, would we need a uh, motion to accept them and get rid of this other company, Jerry? Yeah, but we can discuss it and, and make that motion and do that at the workshop, I would say, once we have Yeah, final let's get all the, I mean, you have a lot of information, let's finalize it so we have something I'll share it with everybody. we look at. Yeah, I'll share it you? with everybody. Yeah. I and mean, with that, um, I'm sorry, Nancy. But, uh, no, I was Carpenter. just going to ask if you were going to email it, but you said you were, so. Yeah, I will. I'll, I'll email you the, the, all the information on that. Um, with that, Jerry, uh, we did, Jerry forgot to mention, we got the 904 grant, the, the uh, uh, reimbursement for, for that. We will get that in November, so um, that was, that, uh, that's a, a little bit of money that would go help our expenses, so that's great. Um, do you know how much? Thought, well, it's an estimate. It's around three grand, twenty nine hundred nice. and change. Nice. It's an estimate. So they they they'll when they they go through the full calculations, it's gonna they'll get it figured out. So that's good. Um, I was uh, also. Um, I understand we did get a reimbursement from the Allegheny County. Uh, uh, redevelopment authority or for the active Allegheny grant for the VOP for the trail. Um, Dave and I are going to be meeting with VOP on Thursday to discuss our next um, 
next uh, uh, move, and it's probably going to be applying for another uh, active Allegheny grant followed by a BCED grant. But um, we will need at some point, Dave, I know we didn't mention this, but we, I mean, we're going to talk about this, but we will need resolutions from all the, the different, uh, from Verona, Oakmont, and Penn Hills, and Plum. And we'll be working on that probably with, with Craig and so forth. Um, I did contact uh, Darla Cravada uh, um, from from uh, Fitzgerald's office and, uh, about the BOP and Allegheny Active Allegheny Grant. And as a sideline, she did talk about uh, for us to definitely apply for the Corona Corona Relief Fund, um, the the CARE under the county. Care and fund. I mentioned that to. Uh, to Jerry and Jerry was I don't know Jerry if you thought, followed up on that or was going to yeah I got to get get back with uh, Darla about it when I I participated in a webinar that Allegheny County did and I didn't think that we had anything that really qualified because we haven't had really much additional expenses but uh, Darla seems to think that we might be able to find something so I'm going to work with Darla and see what kind of funding we might be able to uh, figure out a way to qualify for. Hey, why not? Why not try? See, I mean, she was definitely adamant about us putting in for it. So why not? Um, and that's, that's all I have. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Forbeck. Mr. Sutcevich. Talk to Jerry about the budget. Budget stuff starting to come up, starting to uh, get things together for the budget. If anybody has anything they want to put in, add, delete, whatever, get with Jerry and I or get with Jerry or get with myself and we'll sit down and try to get this all together for everybody. Other than that, everything's going good. I was gonna mention about the 904, but Mr. Forbeck took, took care of that. And uh, everything, no, no, you're good. And everything's good. So thank you for uh, listening. Uh, question, Ray, what's the status of the uh, audit? Um, they were still- well, I believe everything's been submitted. Uh, I'm just waiting for our copy of the, the audit report. Oh, great. So it's done. Okay. Yep. That's 2019, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So then they'll be starting on 2020 <coughs> soon. Around probably February or March. <clears throat> Everybody just is all just about caught up now. So, okay. or it is caught up. Yeah. Great. Is that it, Mr. Sutcevich? That's all, thank you. No, thank you. Ms. Lialbo. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, last Tuesday, October 6th, the Parks and Rec had their um, monthly meeting, well, bi-monthly meeting. Um, this coming Friday, the 16th, is the movie, drive-in movie, down um, at the borough parking lot. It's going to be uh, Charlie Brown Halloween and Hocus Pocus. So we'll be needing the streets barricaded uh, blocked for, they're saying 6.30 start, so it might be a little bit earlier. It's getting dark a little bit earlier now too, so it'll be an earlier movie start. Also, um, the Boy Scouts are gonna be holding a food drive that evening as well. They're gonna have a large pickup truck. Um, Boy Scouts will be on site to uh, for, to carry, um, to fill it, uh, gather any of the food items that uh, people donate. Also, the Boy Scouts are going to be um, also having a food drive every Thursday at the uh, Farmer's Market. We'll have a little tent and some food boxes. And there was a request that could be made. Could we, um, Jerry, put maybe a food box for the food drive in the borough building in case anybody has yep. a drop box or... Um, for right. sure. Put it in, we'll put it in the vestibule. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Holy Family School, November 14th, they want to have a, a community, do a community day with the uh, 7th and 8th graders. So they were looking for some projects. If anybody has any ideas, we were thinking they could also do like a, like a cleanup day. But if there's any, if anybody else has any ideas on something that they can do for that day for their project, um, please uh, let me know or Jerry know and we can move forward and let Holy Family School uh, Know that that's the combination of St. Joe's and St. John the Baptist, St. Irenaeus schools all together. They're seventh and eighth grade group. Uh, the 
Parks and Rec, they purchased a new mo movie projector for the movies in the park. They used it with the funds that from the Lower, Va Lower Valley Football League. Um, they also, they're looking into getting new speakers. Um, they may be putting out a request. I'm not sure what the final price of what the speakers are, but request from the borough uh, if they could fund the cost of the speakers for the new projector. The other one, uh, when the Girl Scouts had their movie night, there was just a lot of glitches. You know, Nancy and Trish had to go down and help out, and but they finally did get it together. But um, so a new movie projector was purchased. Uh, community Garden, they're having um, their meeting, a public meeting on the 22nd, or 20, I'm sorry, 21st of um, October. Lot of, there was a lot of talk too about the bocce court. They would like to have um, a possible new bocce court for, put down on Railroad Park so that uh, they were hoping to maybe do some work with that before the end of the year. I know um, Vince had spoke with Matt on that and uh, for some ideas. So we're looking into that as well. <clears throat> Going back to the pickleball court, um, a lot of the items that Jeff Pepper had presented, like with the new gate and uh, the purchases of the sales and backboards and thing like, things like that, I talk, we talked a good discussion at the Parks and Rec Committee. We were not ready for it to go forward with those. There was a lot of concerns. Um, having two gates as a safety measure, you know, if there's parents <laughs> Kids, if they're going to be going out in and out, how that's going to work. Also with the sunshades, um, what's that going to do with the residents that live across the street? Is that going to be too shady for them? Um, a lot of residential concerns that were brought up about it. So um, Jeff Pepper what is, was invited. He will be attending the next Zoom meeting for the park, Parks right in December and to uh, give a presentation of what they, the pickleball people would like to do with the money, but it definitely needs to go through recommendations of Parks and Rec first and Council before any approval will be done. So there is a lot of discussion going on about the pickleball court and the other uh, so-called improvements that they would like to, to make. Uh, let me think. I think that's everything I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Provenza. Uh, quick. Um, the, has anyone talked to Jeff Pepper about um, Mr. Lowry's concerns or other resident concerns? I have not, but I will because, um, you know, this was just brought tonight, Mr. Yeah. Lowry's concerns. So I definitely will have a conversation with him. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I, I think, um, I mean, I think he has some valid concerns. Um, I think we might also want to look at what our ordinance say about <laughs> park opening um, on Sundays, uh, that, that may be a separate issue. But I, I do think that, um, you know, the things that I've seen, I appreciate everything that the pickleball group is doing. I mean, they're raising their own money and they're, they're making use out of um, some courts that were neglected. But I, I do think that, uh, I hope Jeff would understand that, um, to balance the concerns of the residents that it, it should go through parks and rec and council. Um, you know, I, and I know, I know you said that, that some of those things were, they decided not to do, but I, I do think it, it, it raises some concerns with uh, the area residents. So I, I just, maybe just getting Jeff on the same page and uh, letting him know that, um, you know, to work, to work with everyone else on what, what they want to do too, so that people aren't upset when they do do something. So, thanks. Thanks, Dave. Also, I had a, when a clock uh, start, I know that was up at Cribs for the longest time. I think it had to do with the churches from mm -hmm. when I was reading that resolution back then. So, you know, I know, you know, the football leagues, they have their games at nine o'clock in the morning too. So, you know, Cribs has been open on Sunday mornings. And um, you know, so we can look at that further and see, you know, what that entails for Riverbank as well. Mm -hmm. I'll check out those ordinances and and see what they say. But I had a question to Janet that I'm not sure you could answer. I don't know if Mr. Lowry's still here, but um, he's not. Okay, you guys, did you hear him say that the shade screens that they already had them and were using them? Is that what you heard him say? That's what I heard him say. So I haven't been down there to see it. But I did tell Jeff not to purchase anything. 
So, so that's a little disconcerting that. Right. So I, I will yeah. have a discussion with him and see what he has done after I, you know, we said to put everything on hold. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, uh, Ms. Alba. Ms. Provenza. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening. I will start with the newsletter. We're currently taking ads and also articles for the October, November, December issue of the newsletter. And uh, if you wish to uh, send an article, uh, we will need them no later than Monday, November 30th. The holidays are coming up sooner than we realized and the printer would like everything early. This way we can have everything out to the people before the end of the year. And uh, if you're going to send an article, uh, please send it to uh, our editor, Donald Wharf, and the email address would be Verona Newsletter, or excuse me, Verona Newsroom at gmail.com. And uh, I can be reached for ads at 412-828-7726. And the sooner you folks get these uh, articles and ads into us, the sooner we can take it to print. So uh, we really would appreciate it. And um, I wanna just make a reminder real quick, uh, please don't forget farmer's market support it. It's a great thing here for the community. We even have people coming from out of other towns. They love it. And uh, many thanks to Stephanie. You do a great job, Stephanie. Thank you very much. And, um, Historical Society, all the meetings are still canceled at this time uh, until uh, further notice. And um, if you would uh, like to check on our email address, it would be, uh, for more information, it would be veronahistory.org. Excuse me, I've got another piece of paper here. One second. Um, Verona Community Dinner is going to be held uh, Wednesday, October 28th, and it'll be at the Methodist Church here. And uh, the host this year will be our council members. We are hosting this dinner. And I'd like to extend many thanks to Shirley Davis and her lady friend helpers. Uh, you are all greatly appreciated. Also, Chamber of Commerce, uh, I spoke to Kevin, and we will be having a meeting on Tuesday, October 20th. It will be at 5.30 at the Inner Groove at the uh, back patio, and we will be social distancing. Um, also, another reminder here, the Public Works Seminar is going to be held on Wednesday, October 28th, and all our Public Works employees are required uh, to have their yearly training, and that will be on the MS4, which is water, and also the O&M, which is operations and maintenance. And it was, it was to be held at the Chadwick and Wexford, but now uh, since things have changed, it will be done as a virtual training. And um, at that training, uh, in case anybody would like to know what they're going to be doing at uh, eight o'clock, it will be on pollution reduction plan presentation. 845, it will be a panel of MS4 experts, which is going to include Gateway Engineers, National Gnite, and also the Stormwater uh, Solutions Source. And uh, the um, last thing would be, uh, with the election coming up, um, Monday, November 19th would be the last day to register to vote. And if you need more information, you would go to votespa.com and then tuesday october 27th that will be the last day to request a mail-in ballot excuse me ballot and you can also go to uh, visit votespa.com and that would be to apply and of course uh, lastly tuesday november 3rd is our general election and i just got notification right before the meeting that on Thursday, October 22nd, uh, Allegheny League of Municipalities and the local government academy will hold an ethics for public officials seminar. And that's going to start at 2 p.m. And I thank you very much, Mr. President. That's it. Thank you. Uh, you, get, 
you gave the alum report. Is there anything from COG or tax collectors uh, committee? Uh, no, I don't have anything. Um, uh, there were there weren't any COG meetings since the last since the workshop meeting. Okay. Mr. Okay. Is there one thing I can add? Yes. I forgot to bring up is um, the grass cutting of the parks. I know that was under discussion at the Parks and Rec Committee, and um, I was asked to bring it up to the, tonight as well. So, um, you know, I was concerned that it wasn't being done every other week. I know I did speak with uh, Jerry and Dave, you also spoke in saying, you know, looking at the fields that um, it was determined that it wasn't as bad as maybe the term, you know, is thought. Um, weeds may be growing. I know our, from what we've learned too, the street crews had been doing or busy doing other things as well. So uh, if you'd like to chime in on that, just to. Okay. Uh, I got a call that day too. And I rode by the field and and it, it didn't look bad. I talked to Mr. Ken and I asked him, I said, why don't you just take some pictures? I didn't think it looked that bad at all. Yeah, I, I went up and took a look at it and I did take some pictures and sent them off to you, Janet and Dave. Um, I, I would, uh, I didn't really pay much attention to the weeds, so I can't speak whether or not the weeds were bad. Um, I do know that the grass was not. Uh, it was also green and um, not half dead like most of our lawns. So, um, and I know that typically this time of year, once things start to get uh, a little bit wet, uh, a lot of times with as much use as the uh, as that field gets with the football league. Uh, that we end up with uh, muddy, dead uh, grass. So I think that the uh, grass being kept a little bit longer is actually being beneficial. And with the guy, streets guys watering flowers and uh, doing a lot of the other things that we have them doing, I think they are trying to prioritize. And um, the grass was not was not long, and uh, I think that it was uh, perfectly acceptable. Okay. Are there any comments from the public? So it looks like we have uh, the top one is Angela Ochapinti. Please make your comments and please limit it to three minutes. Hello, Angela Ochapinti, 521 Center Avenue. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yes. Yep. Okay, great. Um, just a couple of things. Um, does anybody know what's going on with the sewer lines on Center Avenue? There, apparently there, a couple of the neighbors are having backups into the house and there was, I wasn't here for that day, but there was somebody, we have blue lines marked on the street and they did speak to one of the neighbors and said that our sewer lines are collapsed. That's why our sewage has been backing up in the house. And they are marked all the way up Center Avenue with blue lines. And I was wondering if anybody knew what was going on with that. I, I don't know anything off the top of my head. I'd have to talk to, uh, to Marsha. If it's blue lines, then I would imagine that Oakmont Water is going to start cutting it up. Okay. And maybe somebody can find out about that because the neighbors had multiple problems with the sewers backing up. And when they talked to the man that was spraying the lines, he said that's exactly the reason it's happening is because the sewer lines are collapsed. So if there's a way somebody can find out what's going on with that, they marked those lines over a month ago. So I didn't see any, no work is being done. I just figured I'm touching base to see if you guys knew what was going on. The blue lines and the yellow lines painted on center uh, heading up the hill from First Street were yeah. painted for a one call because we were looking at extending the storm sewer up that direction. Uh, we, know, we knew that the water and the gas lines were on the same side of the road that we wanted to put the storm line, so we had wow. to put one call in. Uh, we've since applied for CDBG funding for that, so the work probably will not take place until spring. Uh, as far as any type of sewer problem, that's the first I'm hearing about it. I will talk with AJ tomorrow and ask him to pop some manholes to make sure that we're not having any issues. Okay. Uh, but as far as any mainline backups or anything, I, I was just talking to him today and he's unaware of anything like that as well. Okay, yeah, my neighbors had problems for the past, uh, well, within the past six months, he's had to unclog his line twice. And he did speak to whoever was spraying the lines, told him that's exactly the reason it was happening is because the sewer lines are collapsing. So if you could check into it so I can update them because they're not on Zoom and I'll just let them know what's going on. Um, the other thing is, is Spring Alley has a um, 
street light out. It's behind the Gallardi house. It's about uh, five houses up from the stop sign at First Street. If you go to the left, it's on the left side going up the alley. And it's completely pitch black back there. So that's been out for quite some time. I thought the neighbor had already complained about it, but apparently he didn't because it's still out. And the alley is very, very dark. So if somebody could maybe check into that, getting the light replaced or fixed. And then the last thing is, is I really want to thank our mayor for everything he, he does in this community. Uh, he really is very vested in us, in us and he is very active in, in pretty much everything that goes on in this community. And I find it very disheartening that this decision to buy this, purchase this police vehicle was, uh, he wasn't even included in that decision. There's been a lot of talk around town because of this. And it's really kind of brought a negative light on Verona. I mean, that was a huge mistake. And not just the fact that he should have been included, but the fact that there wasn't even a vote on a $40,000 police vehicle. There wasn't even a vote from council on that. And I, I don't understand how a mistake like that could be made. I mean, it's, it's, it's not good. So my, I mean, I'm just, it's just my opinion and I'm just a resident, but my opinion is this whole sale needs to be canceled. It needs to start all over. The mayor needs to be involved in the decision and it needs to be voted on the proper way because I have a feeling that there's gonna be some negative attention brought to Verona that it's not gonna be good. So that's just my opinion. So, well, thank you, Mayor, for everything that you do. Thank you. Okay, uh, next will be Kat Hoge. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Thank you. This is Kat Hoge, 443 North Avenue for maybe the next 30 days or something. Um, I did read an interesting Facebook post stating from the new owner, I will pay very little in taxes, real estate taxes especially, because I own investment property and the taxes I pay are null and void. A second post said, landlords get rich in their sleep. How is that? Section 8, are you guys doing that and ready for that? These are your new property owners, and Verona can and should be prepared to receive many more of these if you don't tighten up your ordinances, zoning, and official rules as council. Otherwise, you yourselves might not even want to live here anymore. Everybody asks about rats and why, and I can only guess why. Look at all the houses that sit empty and condemned and vacant, and they're being obtained by certain investors doing a quick, hide the problem, not actually fix it mentality. Ordinance 250-64D. You have an ordinance that allows any single family home in R1, R2, and R3 zones to be converted into apartments following certain not hard to obtain provisions. This ordinance also allows any owner, investment, company, and or partners to convert single family homes into apartments as long as a quote manager or owner of the property lives 15 miles away. Do you think that they care about the alleys and the garbage and the rats? This is an ordinance that has been in effect since 1978 or 76, I believe. Don't you think it's time to have this updated? Why do you even have a residential zoning map if essentially this ordinance lets you do whatever you want? With respect to the sewage lines that were just brought up and collapsing, that also ties to the extra apartments versus the single family homes and the overflow that that causes to the sewage lines. This is a sewage module for the Allegheny County. As per Mark Stanton, he is required to reference the Verona Code and Ordinance any time a resident has an inquiry regarding something, no matter what it is. Essentially, the misinformation that was provided to me and my father on multiple occasions, along with the neighbors, steered our decision in the purchase of this property years ago. As Mark Stanton did apologize for the negligent information given to me and other members of the community last Friday at the borough building at 10 o'clock, he also expressed how his workload is on overhaul. It's the borough's responsibility to give him the help he needs, whether or not you have to bring on more staff to help him. As far as the owners here that took over the house on 443 North that we are in, 
We are literally not even two weeks into them owning this property. And already he has parked a dumpster and materials without proper permitting or proper permission for the borough. He is refusing to recognize the Allegheny Health Department and the EPA's rules and regulations in regards to lead and the restoration of exterior surfaces. And thirdly, you do have landlords who believe that they can just evict somebody during their paid month without the proper protocols listed in the landlord tenant laws of Pennsylvania. If that's the behavior of landlords and investors that are extremely interested in acquiring the properties here, you all have a huge headache on your hands. With COVID, families are struggling due to financial hardship, and these investors definitely know that, and they are coming here. So you all need to put politics aside, come together for the town that we all have been asking you to help protect. Also for future, if you have a resident or a community member email you and you can't respond right away, I completely get that. But if a week has passed and no response, that is unacceptable. Please don't even post borough email addresses if you can't be responsible for having them. I would like to thank Dave Matlin and Jerry for responding to me. I really do appreciate that given our circumstances. And maybe it's a lack of social interaction and relationships due to COVID and the fact that borough meetings are now on video call rather than in person. But seriously, please take your official duties responsibly as you do represent and protect and serve all residents of Verona, regardless of who they are, who they know, or how much you yourself know them. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody next else would be? Oh yeah, we got we got quite a few. Uh, next would be Tim Long. Hello, <clears throat> Tim Long, three two three Penn Street. Um, in, in regards to the grass at Cribs, yes, the grass is not that long at Cribs but the weeds are getting out of control. Um, I'm not asking them to go up there and cut the grass real short. I know it's fall and the grass should be kept a little bit longer, but they do need to maintain the weeds. If we're not gonna be fertilizing to get rid of these weeds to replace them with grass, then they need to be cut. It is unacceptable. I've been up there for the last four weeks and nothing has been done. I'm not the only one Jim Aspaw has also been up there. He brought it to my attention. It is not, it does not look good. It does not look good for our town. It does not look good at all. And we were supposed to have a fertilization and maybe plugging in the field to revitalize the field, but has anything been done? Because yeah. it does not look like that. But it has. Our, tr our field gets treated monthly. Um, well, it does not look like it. Um, whoever is doing think, it. I disagree. It, it doesn't. Okay. I've lived in this town my entire life, Jerry. That town Drive around and look at all the dead lawns. Okay. I, I live, I have, I have three, I, I live on a three lot property. My grass is greener than ever. Like, okay. I'm not talking about the grass, the weeds. Just because the grass is not growing doesn't mean the weeds do not grow. The weeds still need to be maintained. I keep bringing it up and it just keeps getting pushed to the wayside. These are our parks. We care about our parks. That's why we sit on parks and rec because we want to do things in our parks, but we can't keep doing things in our parks if we're not taking care of them. Thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next will be Don. Uh, Dawn and Rhoda, I'm not sure which it's going to be. Dawn and Rhoda, are you there? You're muted. Right here. I'm here. Yeah, Rhoda. Hey, yeah, hi. 636 3rd Street, Verona. Um, I just am um, very concerned about our docks, our public docks. Um, I don't know how many of you actually go down uh, to check them out, but uh, maybe our streets crew can go down and possibly assess damage that's done to the docks. And also there's like garbage along there. Um, if not our street school, maybe we can get a company to come in because it really needs to be addressed for safety. Uh, there's a lot of people that we launch off, you know, our kayaks. And there's a lot of people that fish there also. 
but it needs to be addressed. Uh, I don't know, Jerry, if you want to send them down soon to see before the winter sure. hits, please. Um, also about the garbage truck, um, County Hauling um, cuts the corner sharp from the alley onto Wood Street and they have destroyed the edge of Wood Street along our property. I cleaned up a lot of the broken tar that was there and needless to say, they went over it again and there's broken asphalt everywhere. Um, and then the worst part of it is the stench that is coming down from the, uh, that's coming underneath the garbage truck, the juices is so overwhelming. And uh, number one, it's hazardous to everyone's health, it not lingers, to mention the staining. And yes, it lingers for days, but the staining of the waste juices on our streets, you can actually follow the pattern on Wood Street, any street that the gar garbage truck goes on, you can see their path that they follow. And I'm hoping to goodness that you can address this with uh, waste management, I mean, with um, county hauling, because when waste management was picking up our gar garbage, I never, never saw them leak or be sloppy or destroy our streets. So I'm hoping this can be addressed. Come up to our property and see. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it needs to be patched. We're trying to keep our property pristine looking, and it's like a war zone. <laughs> it's insane. If you'd be kind enough to come and check it out, I'd appreciate it. But it, as far as the juice is coming out of the truck, it needs to be addressed. It's yeah, really bad. Yeah, it's really, really bad. Thank you for listening. I just, I just wanted to say something real quick about the docks. You know, um, last year maybe sometime we had uh made an agreement with brian to go down once a month and and check on the condition of the docks uh do you guys remember that yeah 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 and we had an agreement with him i i can remind him tomorrow to to pick that back up and keep he's he's the best qualified to determine if the docks are damaged or need repairs or anything like that and i can do that if you want me to okay next will be chris mcbride chris are you there chris i think you're muted I think we lost Chris. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll go on to Laura Jacko. Okay, fellas. Laura. Um, just really quickly, I think uh, Nancy was right. Um, oh, sorry, Laura Jacko, four thirty-seven North Avenue. Um, <laughs> I think Nancy was right. Uh, I think um, we do actually need to formally address Kimberly Roller. Um, you know, getting on to the uh, Shade Tree Commission. Uh, at the last workshop meeting, it was suggested that she send a letter to ask about it, and she did send that, but I don't think that anybody responded to her. So if I can just have a formal response of some sort that it was, you know, received and everybody is okay with that, then um, I think that, I think we'd be good to go. I just want to make sure it's all tied up properly. Okay, um, I apologize if I did it twice, but now, I'm not sure whether we actually did make the motion and vote on it or we just discussed it. So thanks for bringing that back up, Laura. Do we? Yeah, I think that it was, they just, uh, we asked her to send a letter and she did and I forwarded it to everybody, but I don't think an actual motion was ever made. Okay, that, that's, thanks for the reminder because that's sort of coming back to me. Are you looking at the minutes there, uh, Jerry? I just pulled up my email to see if I missed the email. I did. So. Yeah, I, I know it's minor. It's just, you know. No, it's important. You know, making sure it's right, you know. Yeah, thank why, you. Why don't we just, to, to, to make sure we do it right, why not just do it again? All right. Well, then I'd just like to make a motion to um, have Kimberly Roller be on the Shade Tree Commission to fulfill uh, Don Wharf's uh, vacant term. I'll second that, Nancy. 
Okay, okay. there's a motion on the floor for uh, can we roll into the Shade Tree Commission by Dr. Carpenter, seconded by uh, Mr. Provenza. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? No no's. Motion passed. Thanks, guys. That's all. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Thanks, Laura. Laura. Okay. That letter did come in on October 2nd, so I think. I found, I found it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next will be uh, Jennifer Morasco. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, this is Jen Morasco Kuhn at 455 North Avenue. Um, I wanted to say three things real fast. Um, I wanted to thank you all for getting a trash can at the bottom of North Ave um, near the Doughboy. It's been disgusting for the last like year. And so having that trash can has really cleared up some of that area. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, I'm not gonna harp too much on this, but I agree with everything Kat Hogett said about the North Ave issue with um, shitty landlords and you know, Section 8 housing and variances and ordinances. You know, if these codes and these ordinances are not up to date, I don't think we should wait for a comprehensive plan um, you know, to do that. I think we need to look over it now before these, you know, investment property managers come in and swoop up our, you know, property. I mean, Verona has been in the news the last two, three years for all the great business that's coming here. And we want to keep that um, positive outlook um, for our community and have great community members who live here and are invested in our community. Um, so whatever we need to do to support Cat and uh, the community members who live here and want to make Verona the best it can be, I'm all for that. Um, and lastly, this is an, um, next to the eye care place on Allegheny River, near Gecko. Does anyone know what they're building there? Um, they're fixing up the um, front of the building and I've been asking around if anyone know what knows what's going in there and no one does. So I didn't know if anyone on the um, council knew. I believe it's a marketing firm. Oh, okay. That's good to know. All right. Well, thank you so much. I cede my time. Have a good evening. Thank, thank you. you. Next will be Kimberly Roller. Hello, Go ahead, Kimberly. Thank you for your time. Um, this is Kimberly Roller at 853 First Street. Um, so, uh, first of all, thank you very much for um, accepting my letter for the Shade Tree Commission. I hope that I can make all of you really proud in uh, beautifying Verona. Um, on that same kind of note, um, I think I was a little bit in the dark about the situation that was going on on North with Kat, and I want to say that um, as somebody who moved to this borough um, three years ago with the promise of this amazingly wonderful town, I'm really disappointed to hear her story and hear that the ordinances are, are potentially out of date, um, that this poor woman got evicted in the middle of uh, a pandemic um, from a bad landlord. So. Um, I think that you should all take a moment and just understand the gravity of what this is potentially doing to this wonderful little town that truly all of us call home. Um, I myself got a letter recently that said, hey, I'm interested in buying your property. Um, and I'm wondering if it's the same type of scenario um, as what happened here. So I think that, you know, again, I think you should all just kind of take a moment and look into this and see what's going on. Um, Additionally, uh, there, I know about the rat scenario um, as the alley behind my house was actually one of the alleys that um, the exterminator came through and looked and they had, um, you know, search warrants to check everybody's property. Um, that will only continue if we have um, landlords who are not interested in maintaining their property, people who are not interested in maintaining their properties. Um, and I'd like everybody to kind of take a moment to think about that and kind of what that would do if it was in your alley behind your home because somebody grabbed a, a property near you. So, um, you know, we're all in this together. And I think that as a council, I'm looking forward to working with all of you and making sure that Verona can truly be the best that we can make it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is uh, Lisa. Lagrateria. 
Yeah, hi, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay, Lisa Lagerteri at 453 North Avenue. Um, first off, thank everybody um, for what you guys do for the community, you listen to us. Um, I just wanna address my concern as a resident of North Avenue on the purchase of 443 North Avenue in conversion to a multifamily unit. A um, couple of things um, concern me. There's a lot of children on this street um, and for an outside investor who does not live in the community to come in and first off kick um, one of our neighbors out of their home that they've been in for longer than I've owned my property here and I'm going on six year to, years is absolutely disgraceful. Were any, were any of you guys made aware of this sale? We're Hello? under litigation, we cannot comment about so it. So you cannot comment on that? No. Okay. So you're allowing an outside investor who's not vested in this community to come in and turn this into a homewood with section eight people coming in here. We have children on this street. Okay, a lot of children. You guys are just asking for riffraff to come in here and, and walk the same street as my children. We don't need any more of that here. And then I got word that there's a second home up the street on North Avenue, possibly going through conversion to a multi-unit. Is that true? I'm going to read you what our website says. You go to Borough of Verona. It says a city for revival. Okay. And when I moved here five and a half, six years ago, okay, I came here. The first thing I thought of Verona was it was trash, okay? And I gave it a chance and I moved here. And let me tell you what I've learned. I've learned that there's a lot of people in this community that have lived here for a long time that care and that are willing to help this community grow and to revive. But allowing outside investors who are worried about a dollar and not about this community is disgusting. I invested a lot of money in my own personal property. And you allow that to come in here, that's gonna make my property value go down. I love the community so much. I bought 418 North Avenue four years ago. And I totally turned it from crap to a beautiful home that sold right before Christmas last year for $175,000. That's income, that's taxes coming into Verona's pocket because of people like me that live in the community that want good people to come in. And if you guys allow this to happen, you guys are letting everybody down. And I think that's all I wanna say on that point, but you guys have some big changes to make when it comes to letting these people come in here and do this. You're not gonna have good people staying. Cause after I hear about what's going on a couple of doors down and up the street now, I wanna get out of here. That's all for me. Thank and you. Thank, you, thank you, Mayor. Mayor Recupero, I tell you what, you are vested in this community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, Jerry. Next is Rhea Homa. Hi there, Rhea Homa, 742 Brunot Street. Um, I wanted to thank you for putting uh, this evening's agenda on the borough website. I really appreciate uh, that. I really appreciate having access and knowing what topics are planned for discussion tonight. Um, thank you. I look forward to having minutes from this meeting available on the page as well. Um, next topic, I also share the sentiments uh, of Angela Oxapinti, and I also feel the community still feels the embarrassment of how the purchase of the new police car was handled. 
I feel that the situation should be rectified um, by starting the process over, if at all possible. Um, I feel that it's really important that we follow proper procedures that are transparent and responsible with our tax dollars. Um, and I also personally feel that a public apology is not out of order as the community has not forgotten about the public disrespect that targeted our mayor. Uh, this is a situation that needs to be addressed and rectified, I think. I also wanted to echo Janet's uh, announcement for the community garden meeting on October 21st being held via Zoom. We will be sharing how the Grow Pittsburgh program works, potential lots and project timelines for the garden. We will also be brainstorming garden ideas, really exciting things, um, things that we can grow and events that we can hold, uh, discuss our next steps and also answer community questions. The meeting will be held this one. Uh, on Wednesday, October 21st from 7 to 9, and the Zoom link is available through Verona Community Group's website under the community calendar page. Also, if anyone is unable to join, but they wish to learn more, please contact Verona Parks and Rec at gmail.com. Verona Parks and Rec at gmail.com. That's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next. And I, Chris McBride has her hand up again. So. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. great. I'm sorry about that. For some reason, I was not mute. I was muted. So good evening. I am on 439 North Avenue. I live right next to Cat Hogay. And I can tell you that three years ago at our first Crime Watch meeting, we'd heard that the landlord was selling to investors. And I spoke with zoning at that time. I spoke with the mayor on that evening, and everyone told me that this would never happen, that they are single family units. We've been functioning under this idea that we're making investments in a neighborhood that really nurtures a family environment, that we moved here and our families to this neighborhood to thrive in, and they have. The first day I hung up curtains in my house eight years ago, there was a girl shooting up in the car right in front of my house. And she was in the rental unit right down the street. Okay. In those eight years, things have changed dramatically. We have a lovely neighborhood. We have a very tight community on our block. We spend time together. Our children play together. We enjoy each other's company. And we're aware of who is a negligent landlord in the community, as is, the previous landlord who, who owned the house that was sold next door. The house next door has insect damage on the outside of the house. I've sent emails and I've sent photos. The new landlord showed up and is planning to put up siding over these insects without anyone saying anything. So I, I hired my own exterminators to come and look at my property and do a visual inspection of the neighbors next door. They have carpenter ants. So now I will have to protect my property because no one is insisting that the negligent landlords who've owned these properties will take care of them. Secondly, there's a collapsed retaining wall in the back. We're discussing rodents. Well, rodents are also groundhog. We have an entire condominium of groundhog living right next door. They've been there for years. The previous landlord took 12 of these animals out of the collapsed retaining wall when it collapsed five years ago. We've lost three trees in our backyard due to these rodents. The landlord has not addressed this issue. This is an issue that will need to be addressed by the new landlord. Who takes care of ensuring that our property values won't plummet because of negligent landlords? Whose job is that? Is that someone on the board? Is that the zoning committee? There's the other house on North, which is 525, which has been bought and will be transferred into apartments. So in a matter of 30 days, we're adding six new units on a street that has trouble with parking. So we're going to have 12 more cars. I have a driveway. Six years ago, I asked that lines be put on our street in order to keep tensions low because people fight and people fight about parking. 
I myself had witnessed people dropping the F-bomb in front of their children and other people's children over a parking spot. It's been six years, six years I've been asking for this help. For the groundhogs, my son was the youngest person to ever speak in front of council to tell you how many creatures there are in our backyard. I have security footage of how many animals we have back there, but nothing's been done. We care about our neighbors here. We care about our community. We care about our property value. And we also want our school district to thrive. How can we do that if we don't bring in families that are invested in our community? And where does the buck stop? Who decides these things? Is that you, council? That no one, no one knows? There's no response because, to that? Because of litigation, we can't talk about things right now, Ms. McBride. So. Well, how about this? How about we start making the community more aware of what is actually happening? Because with COVID, lots of families are down on their luck, and a lot of people will be struggling to maintain the homes they're in. And if people can swoop in and change the dynamics of our neighborhood, then we're losing out. Thank you. All right, next we have uh, Vince Floda. Go ahead, Vince. Hello, can everybody hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay, I, I just have two things to touch base on. One is the, uh, the fertilization of the field that was mentioned by Tim and, and Jerry replied to it. Um, I don't know if anybody knows this, but we've had a severe drought this summer and you're not supposed to fertilize fields when there's a drought because it could actually do more harm than good. Also, if the fields are being fertilized, um, when were they being fertilized? Because I believe you're supposed to close the park for 48 hours so kids don't play in the uh, chemicals that you're fertilizing the field with. And I'm up at that park almost daily and I've never noticed it in the last year of it being closed for fertilization. So uh, if you can answer those questions by the next council meeting, I would love to have an answer. And my second thing is I agree with a lot of other people in the community that the mayor does deserve a public apology from the people that questioned him when he said that it was not voted on for a new police car. Certain people, some people said that they swore up and down that it was voted on. And they said cockily, like, hey, go look at the minutes. And then they did look at the minutes and it was not voted on. So that needs to be addressed publicly because it was addressed publicly that the mayor was wrong and he was not wrong. I also feel that we don't need four police cars in a two police car town. That is a very big waste of resources. I drive by the police station a lot and I always see one police car parked and not being used. So I suspect that once we buy another police car, I will see two police cars parked and not being used. Um, thank you for your time. I hope that you guys can get to the bottom of this because this is a huge mess. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No, that looks like it's it. Okay, this time I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll make a motion to adjourn. General second. Elbow made a motion in the second. Second. Second by Mr. Suchovich. All, uh, are there any questions? All those in favor say aye. Excuse me. I don't have a question. Oh, okay. But um, I'd just like to say something before we adjourn the meeting. And, and that is just from me personally to the mayor um, for what happened. I just want to extend my personal apology for what you went through a couple of meetings ago. I can't, I'm not Thank apologizing you. for the council or anybody else. I'm just, that's just <clears throat> coming from me. 
Any other comments? Thank you. I mean, we're all supposed to work. No other comments? All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Those opposed? No no's. Meetings adjourned. <laughs>